Hey, everybody, welcome to the Thinking Crypto Podcast, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. If you are new here, please hit that subscribe button as well as the thumbs up button and leave a comment below. If you're listening on a podcast platform such as Spotify or Apple, please leave a five star rating and review. Well, folks, happy Bitcoin having day. The Bitcoin having has been completed. Bullish times are ahead. We're going to break down a lot and go into different news items. But first, I want to let you know that my book, Rethinking Crypto, is is officially live on Amazon. Please grab a copy and support the podcast. Folks, this book tells a story. It documents a story of what crypto has been through with the regulatory battles with the SEC. It talks about Ripple, Grayscale, the Bitcoin ETF race with BlackRock, tokenization. What does the future of crypto look like? Uh, why FTX and Sam Bankman Fried were not uh, the ethos of crypto. And it provides some investing tips as it relates to crypto. What are the do's and don'ts? So this would make a really great gift for someone who doesn't understand crypto and is trying to learn it and they can get a holistic view of the market folks so that's why i wrote the book it took me a while to write it was uh, certainly a challenging process but uh, certainly a rewarding one now that the book is live so please support also i will be hosting a book signing event in new york city right across the street from the wall street bull folks so it's going to be a great venue at station three which is a web three hub and right in front of that Wall Street Bowl, folks. So if you are in the tri-state area and you can attend, it's on April 30th, uh, please come, come by. It's free. Grab a drink and so forth. And uh, let's talk crypto. Get a signed copy of the book. And uh, link will be in the description for you guys to sign up on Eventbrite. But uh, you know, grab a copy of that book, guys. And I really appreciate your support. All right, let's jump into the news. Bitcoin halving has officially been completed. And this is the fourth halving, cutting the mining rewards from 6.25 to 3.125 folks historic every four years the having continues and we know the great thing about this is that it's within the bitcoin algorithm and it happens approximately every four years and uh, it's the deflationary aspect of bitcoin which makes it vastly different from other currencies and store of values out there it becomes harder to mine bitcoin and uh, Bitcoin that is lost forever is gone forever, right? Uh, so that's the supply and demand economics that plays out that drives the value of Bitcoin in addition to utility and adoption. So pretty incredible. And of course, the price of Bitcoin right now uh, is at $63,603, so very close to $64,000. And I've been here for multiple Bitcoin halvings and bull market and bear market cycles. And it's incredible to see what price we're at right now. And even Michael Saylor tweeted out about this. He said Bitcoin was $8,618 on the day of the last Bitcoin halving. And today we are at $63,000. So imagine what the next leg of the bull run, the bull market's going to look like, folks. So that's why I think we will crack $100,000 definitely this cycle. And uh, we could possibly top out at one hundred and thirty to 140000 Some people are calling for higher uh, prices, but there are diminishing risks returns every cycle. So I want to make sure I'm transparent with that. But you are getting a return, obviously. And uh, as Paul Tudor Jones said, Bitcoin and crypto is the fastest horse in the race. Now, right now, we are in a bit of a pullback, but that's the micro. That's the short term. Long term, folks, I am immensely bullish on Bitcoin and this entire market, altcoins and much more. We'll just have to go through the normal market cycles of pulling back and building support levels. And we see the dollar currency index continues to look strong. So patience is the key here. We got to go through these cycles as annoying, as painful as they are. Sometimes we have to go through them. So, uh, you know, Bitcoin is the rising tide that lifts all boats. So as Bitcoin continues its move up, the liquidity will flow to these altcoins and they will start moving as well. Now, here's a great chart analysis put together by analyst Kevin Svensson, and he has a YouTube channel. Make sure you follow him. He's been uh, documenting this parabolic curve and support trend line here, and it's a beautiful thing on the chart. It's 
certainly aligns. Now, one thing I've learned is that there's no analyst that is correct 100% of the time. That's why I follow multiple analysts and I look at the chart and I do my own research behind their predictions and their uh, analysis that they put out. And I, I think this is absolutely right here that this parabolic curve shows us that we could uh, see a continuation in the near future, possibly in May, uh, towards the end of May, of uh, Bitcoin continuing this rally upwards. He said, Bitcoin, the next parabolic advance could start this week. Bullish continuation on the horizon, he asked. And uh, it may not happen this week, once again, but it, when you look at his chart analysis, it certainly lines up with the trend line here. So let's hope he's right. Uh, here, uh, Wrecked Capital tweeted out an updated chart, just beautiful, showing where we are, are at with the different halvings and it, we are still early in a sense of we're not very close to the euphoric blow off top. That's why some folks are calling for $200,000 Bitcoin prices and, and much more. So uh, we still got more to go, folks. And what we're seeing, you know, I, I've been talking about the macro and what the Fed is doing. And I've been sharing the theory that I think the blow off top could happen this year because Markets are front running the rate cuts, which will come. I don't think they're going to come in the middle of the year or even before the election. I think after the election. That's just my opinion. I could be wrong, but I'm sharing my thesis with you guys uh, from doing my own research because I don't think uh, the, the markets or even uh, the president, this current sitting president, doesn't want to have the economy look bad, doesn't want inflation to be high, and they have to keep rates at high uh, for longer to fight off that inflation. So uh, I think markets will keep rallying. And what we've seen historically is when they start to cut rates, that means something's breaking. And then usually there is a massive correction at those periods uh, where there's cuts. So using that thesis and historical data, I think we keep going up uh, the stock market, Bitcoin, crypto, and everything. And uh, we're kind of in a macro everything bubble if you look at it that way. And it's all correlated to global liquidity, as macro investor Raul Powell would say. So I'm using multiple data sources, multiple uh, thoughts and ideas and thesis from different people. So I'm trying to remain holistic and look at this thing from a 360 view, not just from, uh, you know, with blinders on, tunnel vision, and only one view, because uh, I think it's all, all correlated to global liquidity and what the Fed and the macro does. Because if you just look at the charts, Bitcoin is aligned to the NASDAQ and how the NASDAQ moves. It's pretty fascinating. Uh, folks, before we go further, quick word from our sponsor, and that is VeChain. VeChain is one of the top layer one enterprise grade blockchains out there. They are building incredible Web3 and decentralized applications and working with some of the biggest brands in the world, including PwC, BMW, Walmart, China. They are also partnered with the Boston Consulting Group and building incredible technologies. Uh, VeChain has a very fast and scalable blockchain. Uh, they are secure as well. That's why they're getting all these partnerships and adoption from real enterprises and real companies in the world. I've been a vet token holder holder for years. Many of you, if you've been following this podcast, I'm very bullish on VET and I've been holding the token for years because I believe in this project. So if you'd like to learn more about VeChain, visit vchain.org. Link will be in the description. All right, let's jump into some other news items here. Uh, attorney John Deaton uh, has filed for permission to appear as a MISI counsel on behalf of 4,701 Coinbase customers in the SEC versus Coinbase case. John is doing God's work here, folks. Remember, he supported 75,000 plus XRP holders in the Ripple or in the SEC versus Ripple case. And we saw how impactful that was for that case because the judge was forced to look at, hey, what the SEC is doing here is actually hurting investors. They're not actually trying to uh, solve anything here or try to protect investors is kind of ridiculous because there was no fraud. Same thing here with Coinbase, no fraud. But this is the work of scumbag regulator Gary Genser. So thank you, John. If you're listening or watching, thank you for doing this. Uh, John is, uh, you know, fighting on behalf of the common man because, look, yes, Coinbase as a company wants to win here. But you as customers, uh, uh, whether you're a token holder or you're a user of the platform with different tokens, 
you're the one that's getting hurt by these SEC lawsuits because once again, no fraud has been committed. This has there's no Ponzi scheme or crazy stuff happening here. They're just trying to stop good actors because they are disrupting the banking incumbents and uh, the, the banking incumbents are pulling the strings with Elizabeth Warren and Gary Genser here. So that's what's going on. So John entering in as a Misi is very great to see. And uh, I think it will have an impact as well. And I think, you know, with the Ripple case really set kind of the game plan out here, the blueprint for how we got to fight back uh, the SEC and scumbag regulator Gary Genser. We have to beat them in court because Congress has not acted yet. So this is really great. Uh, Meta lawman James Murphy says, here we go. John Deaton stepping up again to speak up for victims of the SEC's war on crypto. Will any of the people behind the tokens at issue in the Coinbase case also intervene? The tokens are ADA, Sol, Matic, uh, Filecoin, Sand. He lists all of them, right, that were um, in that lawsuit. So we'll see. Maybe the token projects, you know, actually step up. Uh, I'm hoping Charles Hoskinson does because he's been very vocal and, and uh, the, him and the folks at ADA or Cardano step up here. Um, that would be really impactful because united we stand, divided we fall. And if we are able to get more participants coming in as a MISI and participating in different ways, it will carry a lot of weight in the case. James also highlighted that there's an important deadline in the SEC versus Coinbase case. Uh, he says anyone interested in filing an amicus brief to support of Coinbase's motion for interlocutory appeal must do so by April 26, 2024. So important note there. All right, folks, we got the IRS uh, getting their crypto reporting requirements together here. Here's the headline. IRS releases draft of 2025 digital asset reporting form for U.S. taxpayers. So, uh, folks, they know we are in a bull market. They know gains will be made. And <laughs> and I've often stated that, uh, you know, capital gains taxes are highway robbery by the government. You take your already taxed money, invest it. You make a return and and you have to pay the government a whole bunch of money. It's ridiculous. Now, I'm not against taxes altogether. I believe we need to have some level of tax to pay for our roads and fire department, police and all that jazz, military and all that, right? Um, but we see that the governments have gone beyond normal levels of taxation because they can't control their spending. And that's why the taxes have become ridiculous. So um, I'm hoping... <laughs> the uh, capital gains taxes can be reduced at least. So the United States uh, IRS, the country's tax service, has released a draft of its new form 1099-DA, digital asset proceeds from broker transactions for reporting income from digital asset transactions. The form is expected to come into use in 2025 for reporting in 2026. A broker will prepare Form 1099-DA for every customer who sells or exchanges digital assets. Brokers include kiosk operators, digital asset payment processors, hosted wallet providers, unhosted wallet providers, and others per the form. Copies of the 1099-DA will be sent to customers and the IRS, which will use them for verification purposes. Uh, the form asks for token codes, wallet addresses, and blockchain transaction locations. Under the rule proposed in tw August 2023, cryptocurrencies, non-fungible tokens, and stable coins are reportable. The rule stated, with third-party information reporting that specifically identifies digital asset transactions, the IRS could more easily identify taxpayers with digital asset transactions that are otherwise difficult to discover. Now, many in the crypto industry are not happy with this, and the devil is in the details here. So the crypto community weighed in on the proposed reporting requirements after they were announced. The Blockchain Association said the rule contains fundamental misunderstandings about the nature of digital assets and decentralized technology. Coinbase Chief Legal Officer Paul Grewal said the proposed rules would set a dangerous precedent for surveillance of everyday financial activities of consumers by requiring nearly every digital asset transaction, uh, even the purchase of a cup of coffee, to be reported. So this thing has to be pushed back, obviously, right? It's kind of crazy. It goes back to that infrastructure bill uh, situation where you know they have these unreasonable requirements for things that can't even report, right? If you're a node or, or, or doing different things. 
So we got to push back. I, you know, at, at least though, I think the IRS is not as crazy as like Gary Genser and the SEC are. So they're willing to work the Treasury and so forth. They're willing to work with folks. So the industry is going to have to uh, push back here. And if it gets, you know, crazy where we then have to call up our representatives and go through the whole campaign like we did with the infrastructure bill, we'll have to do that. Um, so we'll watch this closely, but uh, this is something uh, new and, and it clearly shows many of these government folks are not fully educated as to how this technology works because they propose things that don't make sense for it. So uh, stay tuned on this. Now, yesterday we talked about Binance moving its SAFU fund to uh, USDC near a billion dollars. And I said, look, this is another clear indication that the digital dollar will could possibly probably be the USDC uh, stablecoin. We'll have to wait and see. But Binance also received a license in Dubai. So uh, here we got news that Binance has secured a virtual asset securities provider license from Dubai's virtual assets regulatory authority. So they continue to expand, and uh, I think they're in the green here after the whole penalty and paying their fine and CZ having to step down. I'm not going to rehash that whole scenario. You guys know the story already. It was pretty high-profile case. Um, but, uh, you know, this is what I was saying. It, it, they're not shutting down. They're not banning these uh, crypto companies. Just get in line. Now, one could say in the United States, it's a different story, and I believe so, right? Uh, they're, they're trying to kill these crypto startups, not kill crypto, but kill the startups because on you know, as Coinbase and all these guys are getting sued, on the other hand, BlackRock and Fidelity and Wall Street have issued Bitcoin ETFs. They're starting to tokenize. Clearly, they're using crypto and blockchain tech. So it's not to kill it. It's just they want the banking incumbents and the, the TradFi incumbents who have controlled the markets for years, who have the politicians in their pockets, who make campaign donations to control it, right? That's the game. We've been talking about it uh, forever now. So uh, good to see Binance is expanding here. And Dubai has become a very attractive uh, region or country for um, crypto because they have clarity. Now we have news here that Tether brings USDT and gold stablecoins to the TON blockchain, T-O-N blockchain. So uh, this is fascinating. Uh, Tether is expanding its US dollar backed stablecoin USDT and its gold backed stablecoin XAUT to the open network, which is TON. USDT will go live on TON on April 20th and XAUT will uh, follow in the coming months. Tether CEO Paolo Arduino told Hold the block. Now, I recently interviewed uh, Paulo on the podcast. If you, haven't, if you haven't seen that, be sure to check it out. We talk about all of these things and uh, their expansions and plans and much more. Now, folks, uh, before I wrap it up here, quick word about uh, the DC Blockchain Summit. I will be at this summit on May 15th and May 16th. 15th is the summit day with great speakers, many from D.C., uh, Patrick McHenry, Kristen Gillibrand, Senator Lummis, Hester Peirce, Caroline Pham, and many industry leaders. Uh, and uh, guys, it, you don't want to miss this. And uh, I'll be there so we can catch up. And also day two, the 16th, will be Blockchain Education Day, where we will be going on Capitol Hill. So that will be really great. I'm looking forward to that. And um uh, if you can make it, uh, be sure to check out the link in the description. You can get a discount on the tickets using the code Thinking Crypto. Uh, it would be great to be there. It's being put together by the Chamber of Digital Commerce, and uh, it'd be fascinating, especially the Blockchain Education Day, to go on DC and see how the the, the advocacy groups like the Chamber of Digital Commerce, uh, you know, what they're doing and how they are speaking to these folks. So I hope to see you, those of you that, who are can make it there and. Uh, uh, guys, it, once again, check out my book. If you haven't as yet, link in the description on Amazon. Appreciate your support. Thank you for watching and listening. And I'll talk to you all later.